welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to look into Windows 23 release features and I'm going to be focusing on Flow. There are tons of awesome enhancements this release and I'm super excited to share that with you. So let's jump right in. I'm here on my setup, uh, Flow setup, and I'm going to create a new Flow. I'm going to try to walk you through different enhancements as I'm building a Flow. I'm going to start with the screen Flow. And the first enhancement is really exciting. We can now have a data table. Um, in a screen flow. So if you wanted to show a list of anything, list of contacts or list of cases for an account, you can do that by using data table. So let's see how that works. So for this example, I'm going to just hit plus here and create on screen. And we're just gonna keep it simple and I'm gonna drag and drop the data table. So that is the component you need to look out for. And I'm just gonna call it account list and label the api name and you can call it count list and you have to then give it a source collection now this can be any collection it doesn't have to be uh now this can be any kind of source collection that you have in your flow it can be um, a get record so let's say you queried the accounts before this or maybe there was something else happening and you wanted to query all the cases for the account so whatever it might be, you just have to make sure that the collection exists and it has a data entry point. So I'm just going to hit new resource since I don't have any collection and I'm just going to create a collection here and we can populate data in that collection later on. I'm just going to call it var account list or rather list of accounts. And since we are trying to display a list, I want to make it multiple collection and let's just say account. And then you just select the list accounts. So right now the account is empty because I have not queried it yet, but let's keep it that way. And, and then you have row selection mode. This means um, you can let the user select multiple accounts from that table or single or view only. We're gonna look at three of those um, differently. And then you can also say how many rows they can select. So let's say if you uh, wanted to do six rows, maximum they can select. And then you have to configure column because to show the table, you need to tell the system which field you want to display from the account. To do that, you have to use the source field and let's just say name. So based on the collection that you pick, it will display the names for that object. Since I picked account, I'm seeing all the account fields. Hit done, then that gets added. I also want to add, let's say type of account. And I'm just going to keep it to those two fields. Okay. Then hit done. So that's the inside done. You can also set component visibility and everything else. Um, you can also do something uh, manually assigning this variable. So once the user select something, maybe you wanted to assign it to some other variable to then later use it for something else, you can do that or it will auto create some variable for you to use as well. Okay. So that's the data table. So I'm now just going to quickly add the view only as well, just for showing count view, count view. And this time I'm gonna make it view only, show you the difference. And I'm gonna just use the same account list. And we have to do the same stuff here, configuring column, just keep it to name. And the difference between the multiple and single is that multiple will have multi select checkbox, single will have radio button. So just like this. That's how the UI will look. So we'll skip that. And you can also do text overflow. So let's say if the values of the fields were too long, you can wrap it or clip it. While we're here on the screen, I also want to show you another cool feature around lookup. So I'm going to drag and drop the lookup over here. And let's say I wanted to show the account lookup on contact. And I will do object API name is contact because that's where the object, the field exists. Label account lookup field. So what's the field on the contact that I'm trying to look up? Account ID, because that is the API name of the field that is the account lookup. And the moment you add account ID, as you can see, I'm now having that um, lookup screen. And I can just name it um, account lookup for now. That's the name of this component. And this is the new part where you can now have maximum selection. So before, you are only able to have one lookup. But what if you wanted to select multiple people? Let's say you are trying to have contacts added to an opportunity. So 
so that you have an opportunity creation wizard and you want to add multiple contacts to the opportunity as contact roles instead of having one at a time you can have multiple selections so people can select multiple contacts for example so for this case i'm just going to say four this means i can select four accounts here and i'll show you how that works all right so that is pretty much it here let's hit done so for now let's save it and see what it looks like before i actually debug this i need to populate that account list with some data so what i'm going to do is use get records and let's say get accounts count and maybe the condition is type equal to customer direct and i'm going to say give me all records that have that type and instead of letting salesforce store the field i want to assign the variable because since i already have um, the collection created i'm just going to use the third option to assign whatever this get records comes back with i'm trying to assign it to the record collection and then i need id and name because those are the fields i referred i also want to add type okay and hit done so that should at least give some data into our data table save that and now i'm going to debug it okay so as you can now see we have account name account type since i queried all the customer direct that's the type and i can select it you'll only be able to select five or six times yep so that's six times the moment i select six times it's already grayed out so i cannot select anymore because that's what my maximum number was and this is the second view only here i cannot select anything and for the account lookup now here i'm going to try to do some accounts i'm just going to do this i'm going to do another account so as you can see i can do multi select inside the lookup and then later you can use this value everything that i'm using as component all those values are accessible in the flow to be used moving on to the next awesome feature you can now use in and not in inside a get record and when that will be useful is let's say you wanted to get all the contacts for an account where that will be useful is anytime you wanted to query records based on a number of ids so for example you wanted to query all the contacts then you're going to create a contact list first then you are going to query all the opportunity contact roles for that contact and then instead of doing a lot of loops and um, downloading extension packages for that you can do it out of the box in salesforce so let me show you what I mean. So first I'm going to create a list of IDs so that I can use that in my in operator. So to create a list of IDs, what I'm going to do is do a loop. I'm going to loop through selection. So I'm trying to loop through the IDs that my users will select on that account list. I'm just going to use what's already existing. And if I do account list, and this is how you can use the selected selected rows that means it will have the values that the user selected okay and then first item to last item hit done then what i'm going to do is create an assignment here assign assign account ids and then first create a resource of text collection so let's just say account ids data type is text and it is a collection of text the reason i'm picking text is because i just want to have a list of ids that's why i'm creating a id list then i'm going to add into that list since i'm looping inside the selector so let's say if the user selected three accounts i want to add all those three account ids into this account ids list so now i'm going to say that loop to selection dot id okay. it done so by the time i come out of the loop i should have all those ids populated in that list so now let me show you the feature so get records same thing right we're getting selected account now and again we are querying the same account object and this time we are doing id in so this was not available before you can query on id so you can get all the data you need at once 
account IDs. So basically give me all the accounts that fall under that account IDs. Of records and hit done. So that will have all the accounts. And then let's do something else. Now what I want to do is show that in a different screen. So for this case, I'm going to use the data table again. And I'm going to say source collection for me is accounts from get selected account because that is my second get. Okay. And I'm just going to make it view only because I'm only trying to show that. Configure columns and add name. Hit done. Save it. We're going to debug this one more time. So the first thing I'm going to select two accounts. I'm just going to skip this all. Hit next. And there you go. Now you have two accounts. So this is what's happening in the background. We created that account IDs list. So that means I got two IDs in that account because I selected two accounts. And then it's now displaying them over here using the same data table. Pretty cool, right? All right, moving on to the next enhancement, I'm going to now create a new flow of record trigger type to show the next few enhancements. And I'm going to just stay with account here. Keep it simple. So here's the requirement. I'm trying to update all the contacts related to the account if the account address gets updated. If somebody updates account um, state, for example, I want to update all the contacts state as well, the mailing state. Okay, so that's the requirement. Very simple. Um, and here I'm just going to say conditions is met. And for me, let me just do billing country. It's changed. It's true. Okay, so if I change the billing country, I want the contacts to be changed as well. And we have to select the second option because we are doing contact update. It done. So previously, without this update, you'd have to then query all the contacts, loop through the contacts, and then update the values of those contacts, tie them to the account address. But now, this is what you can do. You can just say plus and get the update records like normal. You don't have to query all the contacts. Update contacts. And this is the option now. So you can say update records related to the account record that triggered the flow. Select that. And here you can see all the records related to account. Record dot. And you'll start to see account brands. So all of this custom, sorry, all of these standard related lists are here as well as custom. So the custom will have underscore R at the end. Standard will not. So in my case, I want the contacts. So I'm going to start typing contacts. And here we go. So we have related record dot contacts. That is all the account contacts related to the account. And you can also specify conditions. So maybe you don't want to update all the contacts, only the contacts that have, um, let's say the address is empty. If the mailing country is empty, only then you want to update the country to account country. That's a very valid um, requirement that we get a lot. And then what's the field you want to set? Country, mailing country, set that to record dot billing country because we're just matching mapping the billing country to mailing country and hit done and that's it that as simple as that let's see that in action and this functionality is very similar to process builder process builder had this functionality before and i'm going to try to pick an account that has an address hopefully Billing countries USA here. I'm going to change it to UK. Run. And it went inside, obviously, and then it's going to try to find all the contacts. Well, the remaining country is null. If it didn't find anything, it would not do anything. But if it did, it will go ahead and update all the contacts, mailing addresses to account billing address. Talking about our next feature, um, that's around asynchronous. So if you are adding schedule path on your flow, you can now set a month offset. So before you were only able to set um, days and hours and minutes, but now you can do months before and after. So just making it simpler. Uh, otherwise, you'd have to do 30 days, 60 days, and so on. But if you wanted to 
set up a follow-up email or task creation based on certain opportunities created or created or cases created you can use the months after or before as well so that's also new and another feature i want to call out is all these components are very dynamic now so let's say if you wanted to set up a component visibility based on another value on the same screen it will dynamically refresh it so what i mean by that is i'm just gonna say i'm going to add two things here i'm just gonna go add a number here first just to show the example let's say test number call it test number and i'm gonna add a display text as well And now I'm going to set a component visibility here. When should it display? The conditions are met. And I'm saying only show this if the test number is equal to one. Just a very random scenario. I'm just going to type one here. Okay, hit done. Save. And I have not tried this before, so let's see if that works as expected. So what I'm expecting is if I type one in that number, it should show me the other value. So right now the display text is not there, but I'm gonna type one here. And there we go. We have now the display text. If I type two, it will disappear. So it's a very um, real time refresh. So this will be really useful in situations where you wanted to show fills only if they select something based on the user input. So you can do that uh, without having to have multiple screens. There's another really cool feature, which is around filtering your pick list by record type. I have not tried this out, but this sounds really awesome because I know that was a pain point when you're using pick list. So it will show you all the pick lists instead of just one record type. There are other tons of feature just within flow, but also look at all the admin developer, whatever cloud you use the most or applies for your business. Definitely check out the release notes and be prepared. Um, I would also recommend going through the flow updates or any sort of system uh, updates that Salesforce is making. You always should be aware of these because they change. Uh, some of them are critical updates. So definitely check it out and make sure that your orgs are not impacted by them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know in the comments what was your favorite feature and how do you envision using it.